and I'll go ahead and just import this footage directly in here just like I did before. I go to my G speed, go to my contents video and import that directly in. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and just drag this back down to the timeline just like we had it before. And one of the things that I wanted to point out is the audio. Remember I had talked about the audio before where you can look at the Premiere Pro icon here and if you happen to see a speaker by itself, it's just audio. Or in a video uh, clip, it looks more like a film strip if it's just video. And here you see that we've gone ahead and joined the audio and the video together even though they're in separate folders. Again, Premiere is keeping track of all that for you. Well, with typical MXF, I'm going to go ahead and expand this window. You'll see that I have all four audio tracks. This particular uh, video was set up to record on all four audio tracks in this case. And again, Premiere is, is, is using all of that information and will automatically set those up for you. So you've got four audio tracks here. It looks like we're just using tracks one and two for this particular example. But it's really nice that Premiere has just gone ahead and put that back together for us. And I don't really have to worry about it. I can just concentrate on editing. Okay, let's start going in here and doing um, a, a couple of quick cuts here. I'm going to go ahead and just uh, hold down my control key uh, for Windows or uh, Apple key on the Mac and then I'm just going to go ahead and just start to do a very quick little edit here and just start to take some of these down and just go right through this very quick editing process. And again, you'll start to see what I mean just being able to get in here and work on some of these shots here and just get exactly what I need. I can go ahead and ripple delete this particular shot out and then just very quickly come in here and just start to edit. Very, very nice and tighten some of these up. And I'll go ahead and just zoom out on the timeline and find some additional clips here and see what uh, what I want to use. Here's a clip in here I don't think I really need so I'll just pop that out and just start editing. Again being able to do some of this on a laptop um, just while you're kind of putting some of your clips together so you can sort of organize your day and figure out exactly what it is that you need uh, is just really nice. So once you've got your video put together let's go ahead and just add a quick title and show you how, how we work with adding effects and so forth on top of this P2 information. So I'm going to go ahead and just type in a very quick title here. And I'll just go ahead and just sort of pull this out like so. Just very, very nice. And you'll notice that we've got a great titler. I typically use Photoshop a lot, but uh, this looks like it's working out pretty good for this particular quick title. And I'll go ahead and just drag this directly uh, on my timeline. Maybe I'll zoom in a bit and take a look at this particular title and see how it's doing. I can just go ahead and just start to play some of this back. And what you'll notice is I'm getting a very, very nice preview. I've got graphics on top of that, so the P2 information is not slowing me down at all. Again, I have to keep going back to that it's native P2. Again, we're not doing anything special to the P2 format, just straight P2 editing. And what about if you wanted to go in and add some, uh, some effects? So let's go in and click on my title, go up to effects over here, and let's lower my title maybe down beneath here. Let's click on position and maybe I'll move my title just a little bit here and go ahead and reset that back to where it was so I get a little bit of motion there and I'll go ahead and just play that right out. So very very nice smooth motion exactly as you would expect it. Now speaking of motion what about using programs like After Effects with this P2 information? What do I have to worry about? What are the types of things I need to, to worry about? Well one of the things I pointed out if we go over here and we click on properties you, you may recall is we had talked about the aspect ratio being 1.5 so that's just one of those things that you want to keep track of and understand and know your screen size is 1280 uh, by 1080 so let's go ahead and launch After Effects and we're going to do that through File, Dynamic Link, New After Effects Compositions. There's multiple ways to do this but I'll just do it with one of the tools that's built into Premiere Pro.
we'll give After Effects a chance to launch. There you go. And I'll go ahead and just maybe uh, type this as a project. And here's my comp. So my comp is ready to go. And let's go ahead and just grab a title here. Maybe we'll um, go over here to our character controls and maybe we'll try to take this up a little bit. And Arial Black looks good. And I'll just go ahead and use blue and gold colors there for Annapolis. That's good. And let's go ahead and just add a little bit bigger stroke on there, maybe. That looks really good. Now, one of the things you want to pay attention to is go ahead and look at your composition settings. And make sure your composition settings are on DVC Pro HD 2997. And you've got everything uh, set up, 1.5 aspect ratio. Uh, I'm only going to need this to be about five or so seconds, so I'll leave that at five seconds. But really important that you've got this set up. No worries if you didn't set it up and you've already jumped into Premiere, but if you, if you go ahead and just go back into comp settings and double check that, uh, you, you know you're in good shape. And I'm going to go ahead and put this back to fit so I know that uh, my title is going to be exactly the same size. Now I can go ahead and uh, call on effects and presets like we've shown you before in other demos. So I'll go ahead and bring up Adobe Bridge. Let's go over to text and our new 3D text here. Uh, I kind of like this one now. This one's kind of cool. So I'll go ahead and apply that to this one here. And let's go ahead and play that back out. That kind of looks fun. All right, that's excellent. So now what I want to do is just go back to Premiere. And you'll notice that because I launched Dynamic Link directly from Premiere, again, File, Adobe Dynamic Link right here, that's going to already set up Premiere uh, and Dynamic Link with After Effects. I don't need to drag that over from After Effects like we've shown you in some other demos. So again, just showing you a different way to do a Dynamic Link directly within Premiere. So what I'm going to do at this point is just go ahead and drag this uh, directly over here. Let's zoom in on uh, that a little bit, and I'll slide down here on the timeline for a second. Let's just go ahead and play that back. Really nice. So nice and clean. I'm, I'm able to go in here and, and play around with After Effects and say, okay, what happens if I want to you know, move this around? Maybe we'll, we'll go look for some sailboats here and say, okay, that, that's a good spot. Let's go ahead and dump that uh, directly in here. That looks great. And if I'm looking at this, and I think that's actually happening a little too fast, don't forget with Premiere, you can go back to speed duration, and you can go ahead and slow that down maybe by 50% to make it twice as long as it was, and then go ahead and just play that directly out. So you can actually go in here and slow things down without actually having to go back to After Effects. It's a very cool feature. Let's go back over to After Effects for a second and say, okay, if I click on this, what other types of effects can I do for that? Can I do anything sort of uh, fancy for the water? So I'll go back and to browse presets. And here we go. Let's go down to uh, backgrounds. And let's just see if there's something that looks like it might be kind of fun. Uh, here's one that's got a lot of water in it. So I'll go ahead and just double click on this one. And that's actually going to now replace that right back with the water effect. And I can go ahead and just render some of this uh, directly out. That's really cool looking. All right, that looks great. And then I just go pop right back over here to Premiere. And you see Premiere will automatically update itself. So it's got that, that great cool effect of Annapolis just coming right in and, uh, and playing. Really, really nice. So uh, you see that we've got you know, really good functionality between Premiere and After Effects. Great way to deal with P2 information. What about when we're ready to export? What types of things do I need to deal with? Well, export is really a piece of cake. All you have to do is just go File, Export, our brand new export to P2. So I say export to Panasonic P2, and I can use uh, user clip name is fine. I'll go ahead and do the entire sequence, and I'm going to go ahead and just stick this on my desktop. That's fine. And that's going to go ahead and recreate that contents folder and put the P2 information back together again. So I can copy that to a P2 card, of course. I could go ahead, if I wanted to, and directly put this on a P2 card.